my name is Amashni, and in this lesson, I will be introducing you to linear equations. I will start by showing you some simple equations, and in the rest of our series, I will progress to more complex ones. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to understand the basic concepts of a linear equation, solve simple linear equations. For us to get a better understanding of equations, Let's look at a practical example. Now you can join me in doing this or you can try it on your own a little later. I'm going to set up a scale using a glass, a pen and a ruler. First I fasten the pen on top of the glass like this. Next I balance the ruler on top of the pen. I'm going to use a five cent coin and paper clips to balance the scale. First I take a 5 cent coin and place it on the end of the ruler. Now let's see how many paper clips it would take to balance the mass of the 5 cent coin. One paper clip, two paper clips, three paper clips, so we see it takes three paper clips to balance our scale. Now even though we are comparing different quantities of objects, one coin and three paper clips, the mass of the coin and the paper clips are the same. Now we can say that the mass of coin is equal to the mass of the paper clips. Thus, if we represent the mass of the coin by C and the mass of the paper clips by P, we can write C is equal to P. This is an equation. Let's define an equation. An equation is a statement that one expression or quantity is equal to another. Now, what is a linear equation? Let's look at some examples of equations. Now, what if I tell you that the third and fifth equations are not linear equations? See if you can analyze the other equations. Look carefully. What makes the first, second and fourth equations different? What do you notice? I hope you noticed that all the unknowns in these equations are written without an exponent. In other words, the exponent is 1. These equations are called linear equations. This is a definition of a linear equation. In a linear equation, the variables are just multiplied by constants and added together, not multiplied or divided by one another, raised to the power of 1. Now that we know the definition of a linear equation, let's set one up using the information from the following. Can you calculate how far away lightning struck if you know how long it takes for the sound of thunder to be heard. The speed of sound is affected by the temperature and the humidity. But if you want a rounded off number, then sound travels one kilometer in roughly three seconds. So, when you see the flash of a lightning bolt, you can start counting the seconds until the thunder strikes and then work out how far away the lightning struck. Now, imagine that you see a lightning bolt and you hear the thunder within three seconds. You then know that the lightning struck one kilometer away. If it takes six seconds for you to hear the thunder, you know that the lightning struck two kilometers away. Let's investigate how we can link this information to a linear equation by drawing up a table. In this column, I have the distance from the lightning strike in kilometers. In the second column, I have the time taken to hear thunder in seconds. When the distance is one kilometer, the time taken is three seconds. When the distance is two kilometers, the time taken is six seconds. And when the distance is three kilometers, the time taken is nine seconds. But it takes time for us to fill this in for every possible value. So it would be easier to set up an equation that describes the situation. Let's look at the table of values again. What relationship do you notice between the distance and the time taken? When we had one kilometer, 
it was 3 seconds. When we had 2 kilometers, it was 6 seconds. And when we had 3 kilometers, it was 9 seconds. Do you see that the time is always 3 times the distance? We can write time is equal to 3 times the distance. Now we can write this algebraically. Since we can measure the time by counting or by using a stopwatch, it is a distance that is unknown. So in this case, let's call the distance x. So we write, let the distance in kilometers be x. Then time will equal to 3 multiplied by x. Now, if it takes 12 seconds for the thunder to roll in, how far away was the strike? We know that the time is 12 seconds, so we can write 12 is equal to 3x. Now we've got to think, what number multiplied by 3 gives me 12? Well, that's simple. 3 multiplied by 4 will give me 12. This means that x is equal to 4. So, we know that the lightning struck about 4 kilometers away. Now, if the distance between us and the lightning strike is 10 kilometers, then we can calculate how long it will take before we hear the thunder. So, we know our equation is time is equal to 3x. We know that the distance is 10 kilometers. So time is equal to 3 times 10. This means that our time is equal to 30 seconds. This equation here, time equals 3x, is an example of a linear equation. Throughout the series, we are going to focus on real life examples while we learn how to solve linear equations. So now we can return to our scale. If we look at the equation C equals to P, we find that the equation is in balance, meaning that the value on the left hand side is equal to the value on the right hand side. Now let's see what happens if I add a paperclip to this side here. Do you see that the balance has been affected? Now what is the easiest way that we can restore the balance without removing that additional paperclip? Let's see what happens if I add this paperclip to the other side. Do you see that the balance has been restored? So, when I add an object just to one side, the balance is disturbed. And in order to restore the balance, I must do the same thing on the other side. In other words, in order to keep the balance, what I do to one side of the scale, I must do to the other side of the scale as well. Let's try the next example to help us solve simple equations. Sipo goes to a shop to buy two loaves of bread. The total cost is 10 rand. What did Sipo pay for each loaf of bread if the loaves cost the same price? Can you solve equations like this? Does it make sense to you that each loaf of bread costs 5 rand? Now, the main question is, how do we get this answer by using mathematical logic? This is how the problem is solved using equations. Now remember that we are using a very simple example to show how we set up an equation that is easy to solve. Now we've got to analyze the given information and decide what is unknown. In this case, the price of the bread is unknown, so we must choose a letter or a symbol to represent this. Now in this example, we will let the price of the bread, remember that the price is in rands, and we let the price of the bread be x. This would mean that each loaf of bread will be x. In other words, x plus 
x is equal to our total amount of money, which is 10. Now, x plus x gives me 2x. So we have 2x is equal to 10. But how do we get to our answer of 5 rand? Now, we could simply think, what number times 2 will give me 10? And we know that our answer will be 5. Now, another way of solving the equation would be to say, to solve the equation, I need to know the value of x, which is 1x. Now, in our example, we have 2 multiplied by the x. I need to get 1x on this side. To do this, I need to divide the left-hand side by 2. Now, to keep the balance, I also need to divide the 10 by 2. Remember, we keep the balance in the equation by performing the same operation on both sides of the equation. Now watch what happens. The 2's cancel off, so we end up with x is equal to. Now the 2 goes here once, and the 2 goes here 5 times. This means that x is equal to 5. Let's imagine that the shopkeeper decides to be a bit generous and to give Sipo a discount of 3 rand for every 2 loaves of bread that he buys. Logically, because Sipo is receiving a discount, he will now pay less for a loaf of bread than before the discount was given. The new equation will now take on a different look. The original cost of two loaves of bread was 10 rand, but with the discount, what is the new price of the two loaves of bread? The original price was 10 rand, and the discount is 3 rand. So if we subtract the discount from the original price, we get an answer of 7 rand. Therefore, the new equation is 2x is equal to 7. So we need to find an answer for x that makes this equation true. So if we look here, we need to find 1x, which means I need to divide the left-hand side by 2. To keep the balance, I need to also divide 7 by 2. We get an answer for x as being 3 and a half. Now, what does the solution mean? What did the x represent? Do you remember that we said x is the price in rand? So now we know that one loaf of bread costs 3 rands and 50 cents. We should always check our answers. Sipo bought two loaves of bread. So when we're checking, 3 rand 50 plus another 3 rand 50 gives me a total of seven rands. So this means that our answer is in fact correct. Now I'm sure you already knew the answer for these examples, but we showed that we can find the answer in many different ways. Let's summarize what we have covered in today's lesson. An equation is a statement that one expression or quantity is equal to another. In a linear equation, the variables are raised to the power of one only. The variables are not multiplied or divided by other variables. Whatever we do to one side of an equation, we must do to the other side to keep it balanced. Now it's time for you to see if you can apply what you have learned in this lesson. Number 1. Which of the following equations are linear? A. x squared plus 4x equals to 0. B x squared plus 3 is equal to 0. C, x plus 3 is equal to 0. D, x plus 4y is equal to 0. Number 2. Explain your answer for question 1. That ends our introduction to linear equations. So until next time, keep looking for these exciting equations in the world around you.